So welcome everybody. This is the uh, the first official Zcash Foundation Audiovisual Club meetup. I'm very excited. I've been excited about this for uh, it seems like months now. The idea uh, sort of first came to me back in September, and I brought it to the Zcash Foundation. Um, wondering if it was even a good idea at first. I just thought maybe it was completely off the wall and crazy, um, but it seems to be catching on. So I'm excited to hopefully provide a space for all of us content creators uh, in Zcash to come together and have a chance to kind of uh, help promote each other and help educate each other and uh, yeah, to learn and, and play. And ultimately this is uh, an experimentation. Uh, it's, an, it's an art club. I uh, really hope that we can have some fun together. And um, yeah, so on that note, what we're doing right now with Discord is uh, not something I've ever done before with having a meetup in Discord. There's some interesting uh, settings and things that we'll be playing with, um, including a lot of noises going on. Uh, and then we're, we're streaming from Discord into Open Broadcaster on my computer and then spitting that out to free to z Live. So uh, you can go to the free to z Live.com slash ZFAV club slash live and watch it there. There's also a chat there, which I'm monitoring. Anyone who's watching on Free to Z Live, thank you. And awesome, I see Skylar's there as well. And uh, Skylar is asking about full screen. So I'm gonna switch, let's see if, since we're in a playful experimentation mode. Um, yeah, the problem is that it wants to show uh, whoever I have highlighted as a speaker. So we're just gonna leave it in grid mode for now instead of skipping back and forth and making everyone dizzy. All right, so that's kind of a rundown on what we're doing for this meetup and, and the, on the technical side of things. Uh, if you want to be able to speak and turn on your video in Discord, then uh, we need to make you a, a, a speaker and you might have to exit the room and come back in. Some, some inconveniences here. I am making people speakers as we speak. Um, all right, so a rough idea of what these meetups are going to be. I have posted a schedule, which I'm calling an unschedule, that's posted on free to z um, You can find it at the free to z .com slash CFAV club. And it has sort of a rough idea of what the topics we'll be discussing, but I do want this to be very open. The, the industry that we're all working in changes so much um, in both uh, and the cryptocurrency world in, in, in Zcash and zero knowledge proofs, as well as all of the, the art creation software that we have to use, the, the media production software is also changing very quick. So I want to be flexible with that and I want to be able to adapt and, uh, and, and try some of these new technologies that don't get the, uh, they don't necessarily get enough attention from, uh, let's say more professional outfits that are worried about uh, about these live productions kind of coming crashing down. Uh, that's that's sort of the fun in it for me. So I'm I'm willing to give that a shot. And if you're all willing to hang out uh, and and experiment and play with me, then then all the better. So uh, without much further ado, I would like to uh, kick it over to Dan, who is uh, sort of my co-host and my my cohort on this. And uh, yeah, Dan, introduce yourself and tell us all what you're doing. Sure. Here. Yeah, thanks for joining everybody. It's exciting to get this off the ground with Ryan here. And um, yeah, currently I'm the ecosystem relations manager at the Zcash Foundation. I've been there for just over a year. Uh, I've been an active community member since about 2019. Um, created the Zcash Zeal Twitter account and blog a couple of years ago. Um, and a member of the community advisory panel. And I ended up running, prior to getting my job, I ran for the first iteration of the Grants Committee, MGRC, um, went unelected. But yeah, that, that community experience and, and, and that led to me getting my job here at the foundation. And I guess some, uh, just a little short background that's relevant to the AV Club is prior to working at the foundation, I had 10 years experience in the broadcast television industry. Um, as a camera operator and audio assistant and a production coordinator, just gigs ranging from 
uh, live sports to comedy specials, the NFL draft and things like this. And so bringing that decade of experience and broadcast to the AV club um, feels really awesome to reapply that. And yeah, I met Ryan in person finally at the last ZCon and we hit it off. And uh, some of, some of these ideas I think stemmed from our long conversations at the bar that, that weekend. And yeah, it's just really exciting to see it all come to fruition and, and have people join us here and, and moving this, this concept forward and experimenting. Yeah, totally. That point about us uh, meeting in person and that, that playing into the inspiration of this is, was, is really a key point here. Um, this, I need to stop messing with this. I'm just going to um, put it in grid mode and uh, turn off the non-video participants and then stop touching it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Dan and I met in person and uh, these these uh, opportunities that we have in order to actually come together and sit down and really brainstorm what's going on in the community um, with, with our various backgrounds really fed into the idea of the AV Club that uh, both of us felt like we needed to have some sort of uh, glue binding uh, all of the, the AV creators together in the Zcash ecosystem. I, I have been getting the feeling that there's, um, that there's a lot of people working on their own um, and it, it, those or also organizations working on their own. Um, and I, I'd like to see much more collaboration between all of these different, um, the, the organizations being the ECC, being Zcash Foundation, and also all of the grant recipients, all of the ambassadors. So for the first meetup, I reached out to everyone who, uh, who I could, who I knew, who had interest in, in participating or might have interest in participating in this. And uh, that's some of the folks that you see here on your screen um, and hopefully in the, in the groups and in the chats in free to z live. So, uh, is, is this mirrored now? I don't know. Someone on Free to Z tell me if it's all mirrored and weird. Like, it looks right. Strange. Anyway, Josh, uh, you want to introduce yourself a bit for anyone who might not know? Yeah, I can do that. Hey, thanks, for man. This is uh, it's super cool to see this um, get started. And it's, I mean, it's, it dovetails out of work that you've been doing for a long time, you know, anyway. And uh, the ecosystem. Uh, so I'm a senior vice president of growth at Electric Coin Company, um, and have been with ECC for about five years. And found ECC or found Zcash in 2016 before it was born. Just that it was uh, being developed by this group that was based down the street from where I live, um, and it fit some things I was looking for. So. Um, uh been uh again kind of engaged full time so growth growth team for about five years but the growth team focuses on um kind of everything related externally related to ecc uh and so that's inclusive of um our good product marketing our alliances our growth marketing um and then our regulatory and policy work and so in chris is here i see chris tomio who heads our growth marketing function, which is where all of the kind of creative and comms uh, work is done at ECC. Is Chris actually in the room? I, I'm not, um, yes. oh yeah, there he is. Okay, I'm gonna make Chris a speaker as well now. And I would, uh, Chris, if you can't actually unmute yourself or turn your camera off, then you need to exit the room and come back in and you should be able to. I just made you a speaker as well because I would like, uh, okay, he's gone. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, Josh and I used to work together uh, at ECC, and I was um, very much involved in a lot of the, the video work that ECC was doing at that time and trying to build the, the YouTube channel and things like that. So we will definitely talk more about the content that ECC has made. Uh, they, they are one of the uh, most productive content creators in, in the Zcash space, I think, in the first six years. Uh, so I definitely want to touch on on some of their content with the perspective series and with uh, some of the tutorials, um, as well as uh, the work that was done with some of the wallets and and merchants to create some tutorials um, like Guarda and Coinbase Earn. Um, 
First, I would actually like to kick it over to, to Joel, though, with the, you do the Zcash podcast, which was a recent grant that was recently approved, and you have, uh, have really kicked it off with a bang. So uh, tell us a bit about what you've been up to. Hey, everyone. So I'm Joel Valenzuela. I've been kind of in the crypto space for coming up on 10 years now, I think. And I've been living entirely off crypto since 2015. And obviously, privacy is a big you know, part of a lot of things. I kind of had my, my eye on Zcash for a while. I've known a bunch of people in the community. And it wasn't until the last couple of years when I really, um, it mostly when a lot of the, uh, the mobile wallets started to become kind of like, start to be able to support shielded uh, transactions. That That's when I it became more real for me. And then, of course, Zuko came out to where I live and visited and stuff. And um, I basically got bullied into um, mm -hmm. submitting a grant request for starting a Zcash podcast because I've been doing a podcast on my channel for you know a few years now. And it just seemed like there was so much that I personally didn't know about Zcash and how far it comes since the inception. And I've kind of figured a lot of people also probably didn't know that either. And so I figured might as well ju um, jump on this exploration journey and take a whole bunch of people with me. That's fantastic. And uh, something else that with with your your podcast with the Digital Cash Network, um, I, I think it's really fantastic that you are coming from the sort of the greater uh, cryptocurrency space and the greater blockchain space and you've covered a lot of that stuff and now you're really diving into zcash and i've a lot of what i've seen on youtube in the and on odyssey and uh, around the web in the first years of zcash was uh people who have sort of news podcasts that talk about other cryptocurrencies and then they'll do one sort of off the cuff review of Zcash. And often it's a comparison of, of Dash and Zcash or, or Monero and Zcash. And uh, I really appreciate how you've come in and you're uh, covering much more of the in-depth topics and really trying to learn and to help other people understand rather than um, this sort of cursory uh, side glance that, that a lot of other folks are giving. So, yeah, thanks. I really think we could use a lot more of that sort of approach in the space as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I want to talk more about that uh, once we get past these introductions for sure. So, uh, Chris, now that you're here, since you're uh, you've been so involved with ECC in the past, um, and and we've worked so closely together, I've, I feel like I've worked with all of you so closely though. Uh, Chris, you want to give everyone a quick intro to yourself? Sure. Um, hi. Thanks for having us, Ryan. Um, I have been around. Um, Zcash and ECC since about 2018, I think. Uh, my first, my first um, Zcon Zero, whenever that was, that was kind of my first time meeting people. I had done a little bit of work for uh, ECC, doing some um, website and branding design work, uh, and that was really fun. And then I joined. ECC team almost one year ago uh, to run growth marketing, which is uh, digital and comms and events and branding and messaging and things like that. Um, so yeah, Ryan interviewed me to come on as a contractor at ECC to do some design work back way back, way back in the day. And um, I, we got the job. It was uh, I have a branding and creative agency called Agi. No relation to Ryan's Agi leak name. That was the um, craziest coincidence I think I've ever experienced. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, anyway, happy to be here. Thanks for hosting me here, Ryan. And uh, the end. That's me. Okay, cool. Well, it's awesome to have you here, Chris, and I, your insights will be very helpful to, to a lot of us, I'm sure, and your experience as well. Um, now, Devin here, the other one with the, with the camera on. Thanks for joining us, Devin. I appreciate it. Um, so Devin and I have a, uh, a bit of a different history together, um, coming bef way before Zcash. And, uh, um, and we have, he's, he's a great media maker and has been involved in cryptocurrency for a long time. You want to give us a quick intro into what you're about and why you're here, Devin? Hi. Hi, everyone. Sorry about that. 
Um, yeah, I was going to say Ryan actually is the guy who I, I'm sure most of us have a similar experience, but we have like this, this, this friend that's more nerdy than us. That is the guy that wouldn't stop talking about cryptocurrency when we're like, come on, give it a break. So he's actually the one that I have to thank for having gotten into cryptocurrency back in 2013. It's been 10 years. Wow. So thank you for that. Um, and then, yeah, we, we worked on a project. We actually kind of started a project together. Um, any, anyone that's a, you know, super OG might remember something called the Decentralized Library of Alexandria from way back in the day. Um, we had our first client out that Ryan actually wrote the front end for in 2015. Um, and the idea was just, I had a, like Ryan mentioned, I have a background in uh, media, but really not live media. Um, I, I did traditional production, post-production release kind of thing. Um, and worked in Hollywood for a little while doing a lot of post and then some indies. And just kind of learned that like the system is very gatekeepery, and one of the things that makes it so is that it's um, just a whole bunch of walled gardens. And so as soon as it occurred to me that you could use this underlying blockchain technology for, you know, actually distribution of data, and that data could be something arbitrary like a media file or maybe even just a, a BitTorrent um, uh, address to, to to get a media file, I was like, oh my god, this could change everything. Uh, so yeah, uh, Ryan actually, I think gave it its name. I was calling it archive chain initially. And you said, what about Alexandria? Wouldn't that be cool? And of course, everyone's always loved that name. Um, so that eventually evolved, uh, to kind of be a more descriptive name, open index protocol. Um, and we've worked on that for years. We've worked with, um, the state of Wyoming, uh, to put property records in it and, uh, Caltech to put scientific, scientific records in it and a couple of media kind of attempts, you know, media startups to try to do kind of, you know, YouTube competitors kind of thing. Um, but, you know, YouTube is what it is. Um, and most recently, um, in addition to that, um, my uh, my co-founder and, and wife and I were um, uh, recruited to start and lead an organization called the Web3 Working Group, um, where I had spent a little bit of time kind of doing Kind of some interfacing with kind of Washington and and, and various uh, lawmakers, uh, a lot more in Wyoming initially, um, and then eventually in Wa in Washington to just kind of help lawmakers really understand this technology so that they don't make the mistake of regulating where the code already regulates or under regulating in such a way that people don't feel comfortable or just getting it wrong um, from misunderstanding. So. Because of that background and kind of the media production work that we've been doing, we started a show on YouTube called What Kind of Internet Do You Want? to just kind of talk about these these concepts of what can decentralization do for all different industries and, you know, how does the underlying technology work and stuff like that. So because of those two things, um, a couple of Web3 infrastructure founders had come together and decided that, boy, we really need to have a nonprofit that can kind of educate about this aspect of the industry like this is during a time when you know DeFi and nfts were all kinds of sexy um and just had this sense that like there's so much more here that people aren't aware of yet specifically their interest and in, and in one that's been really important to me for a long time is infrastructure projects where you're using decentralized technology in order to control some sort of hardware somewhere whether it's you know um using a gpu to to to, to render something um, or whether it's storage space or, you know, any number of, of kind of other applications of that concept. Um, and so they recorded us, recruited us, and over the over a couple of months, we kind of did all the paperwork, and so we're actually officially a nonprofit, and we've started a video series, um, just a basics series, essentially, that's trying to fill um, the, the, the gap uh, in, in the content that's out there, where it's meant to be kind of a primer series about all these technologies what is proof of work what is blockchain what is you know this that and the other what are um uh, uh nfts etc um but not in a industry speaking to industry way with all of the jargon that we're all so familiar with and stuff like that but really trying to to unpack it so that it's both somewhat easy to understand for someone that's coming to this uh new um but also technically accurate enough that you're not kind of misleading people or misguiding people um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm, I don't have too much experience with Zcash. I'm a big fan of it. I'm a big fan of ZK Snarks and the underlying technology and stuff like that. Um, like I said, what we've done so far is a basic series 
coming up on this year, we're going to start getting into more advanced concepts, and I'd love to do some some content about um, Zcash and all of the technologies that it can enable and all of the applications that it can enable and stuff like that. Um, and also, I really want to learn more about live streaming. Like I said, I'm more of a traditional production, post-production release kind of a guy, and I really want us to start doing some live streams and stuff like that. So I think I could learn a whole lot from this community, kind of uh, the specifics on that front. So, so yeah, that's me. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And uh, I this this point of us learning from each other. Uh, I like this the spread of people we have talking right now and who have introduced themselves. If anyone else wants to jump up here and uh, and give an introduction, then that is open. If we can work out the permissions in Discord. Um, unfortunately, no one in watching on Free to Z Live can uh, can participate in the voice and video part of this. Um, but that's just the way that it goes for now. Uh, interesting on, okay, so like Devin pointed out that we're going to be talking about like Web3 stuff as well, the infrastructure. So this, I really want this club to cover uh, every aspect of content creation and publishing for uh, for Zcash and for, for like Web3 and all these technologies that, that Zcash is affecting um, with a... Uh, with a nice group of people who actually understand it uh, because I have noticed looking back at the first six years of Zcash media, that there's a lot of content that is uh, misrepresenting the technology. Uh, a lot of it is just inaccurate and some of it um, might actually be uh, have some malintent. Um, so I'm hoping that we can pull together a group that can uh, create some some corrective content uh, and also uh, create sort of a groundswell of um, use cases and use cases that can that can make some people money for for making content via funding through through the grants and jobs and possibly sponsorships and things like that. So we have a good group of people to be able to to start this out and uh, and we'll see where it goes from there. Some other topics that I want to talk about um, later on in the club will be uh, things like localization. When I was working at ECC, I was also uh, in charge of content translation management and working with translators. We already have a good group of people from, um, from Zcash Brazil in here and Zcash in Espanol. And there are, um, there's Russian translators that are doing really good work. Unfortunately, I don't speak all of these languages and the Google algorithm makes it difficult to find content that is not in the native language of, of the searcher. So I, uh, I'm hoping that as a group, we can kind of find, uh, comb through all of this content that's, that's out there and find so the really effective stuff um, and be able to share it. And then we'll have a whole meeting before the the Brazil the Brazil event to go over content translation and what tools we can use to make this more efficient and more accurate and all of that. So, um, we also have Paul just showed up in, in camera. Paul, did you want to introduce yourself? Talk about what you're working on. If we can do the unmuting thing, you're muted. <laughs> you might have to leave and come back again. Um, yeah. So I was doing some some research on the first six years of, of Zcash content, and I, what I came up with was, I, I, I wouldn't say it was surprising, but it was a bit disheartening, because uh, if you search um, on YouTube on Odyssey, uh, most of the content that is popular and has the most views is about uh, price predictions and mining, and as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of short content that uh, is coming from non-Zcashers, I would say. And, um, and a lot of it's incorrect and not to their own fault, but uh, it's, it's difficult to understand uh, all of this stuff that, that we're working on as a community. And I'm, I'm hoping that more minds coming together will be a, a sort of solution to this. Um, Paul, it looks like you're still muted. Can you unmute yourself now? Yeah. No. <laughs> Still can't hear you though. Is your hardware muted? Nope, it's muted again.
Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> while we figure that out, Josh, uh, one of the things that in, in doing this research and looking back at the old content, uh, I did notice that Electric Coin Company had probably like the biggest, uh, the biggest collection of, of media that was, that was accurate for one. Um, also that wasn't about Zuko specifically because uh, a lot of the old content was about Zuko. And then I know that Zuko ended up deciding for a while that he didn't want to do these public appearances. And so there's kind of a gap there. Um, but like the Zcash perspective series was a good example of bringing other Zcashers to the, in front of the camera. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that and about uh, that the, the process of that ECC has gone through in making this content? Yeah, yeah, that's going way back in time. Um, yeah, that's what I want. Do it. But it, but it was like uh, we did have that issue, right, where um, people were equating uh, Zcash with Zuko, um, even assuming the name, the Zs lined up, and that was the reason Zcash had the name um, because Zuko had the name. Uh, which was not true, um, just like the Agi coincidence uh, that was coincidental. But um, but we wanted to like. There's all these amazing voices in the in the Zcash ecosystem, and unfortunately, you know, the many of the press or people that are in the ecosystem always want Zuko because he's so eloquent. You know, he does a great job presenting um, the you know the information that he's presenting. To your point, is accurate, and uh, and he draws a crowd, but. But there are all of these kind of different perspectives and um, and thinking that actually informs a lot of Zuko's thinking, uh, and so we wanted to get to the cryptographers that were building the the underlying technology. Uh, we wanted to folk talk to folks like um, uh, Jack Abigan, who was working on regulatory things at the time, and and Peter Van Belkenberg, who was consistently up in front of uh, Congress on the Hill and testifying to get his perspective about what he thought about privacy and why it's important. And uh, what came out of this, what we did is we set up a room uh, at the place where we were hosting ZCon or where the foundation was hosting ZCon Zero and just scheduled interviews and asked a bunch of questions that were fairly open-ended, um, but somewhat informed. So, you know, some like Vitalik, for example, um, did an interview and we talked about things like uh, governance and um, and dug into some of their expertise, just looking for uh, it from a you know kind of a long form, um, some interesting things, but also from, you know be, how can we take that that full set of content and chunk it up into some shorter form uh, media that that we can use to distribute some of that content. Like going back is really pretty evergreen. Um, so uh, that's something I'm hoping. I mean. This, this, you have an opportunity with this club, I think, to do both, right? To be able to hit news of the day as well as develop some some good evergreen content. Um, but that's that's where we that's what we did, and and it was unfortunately I didn't get to sit in many Zcon Zero sessions because I was back there doing interviews. But um, uh, but but the content I think was was pretty valuable for us at the time. That's a really good point um, about the evergreen content. And, uh, and the amount of content that's out there, because while I have been talking about the, um, the, the massive amount of, of mining specific and, and price specific content that's out there, there is, there are a ton of presentations by Zcashers and by, by zero knowledge, uh, proofs, mathematicians and, and cryptographers that, uh, they, it comes out in the form of a one hour speech and in a one hour perform, uh, on, on stage presentation. And uh, we lose a lot of people, uh, I think before they get to the meat of the conversation, this content is all still online. And I would really like to see, um, someone in the club go through and find like their favorite clips and be able to isolate these in like YouTube short formats or TikTok type formats. Uh, in order to bring some of this evergreen content into the spotlight a bit more. And I think that we could, we could boost some views that way. Yeah. The, the other thing I want to add, like, hopefully this group will, you know, it, it will get beyond the, the Zcash community, um, and, and bring some voices in that, um, 
that so we're not kind of in the echo to the Zcash echo chamber. And so that's that's something we were trying to do a little bit there. An ex example is like Vitalik and, and some others that are in the community or that were kind of around the periphery of the community, but not not day to day Zcashers. Um, and finding them and elevating their voice and even beyond maybe even crypto. Uh, and uh, and in getting that, you know, getting getting more folks uh, engaged. It's important that we move away from Zuko as the uh, the logo for Zcash, um, and that we hear more voices. Absolutely, I totally agree, and uh, I'm glad that Joel's here because you have you started your podcast with, I believe, Nathan, and you hit the ground running with all of the voices that aren't Zuko, <laughs> and I I think it's great, and also you have this connection to the other crypto uh, communities that um that like ecc doesn't necessarily doesn't necessarily hook do you want to talk a bit about like your process and and uh as a as a sort of newcomer into the into zcash uh, av media space um what what has that been like yeah so like most things way too many things in this supposedly you know trustless kind of you know uh github focused kind of world a lot of it comes from like personal connections and so I'm pretty close with uh, Naomi Brockwell, the renowned privacy advocate and very strong Zcash advocate. And obviously, you know, meeting with Zuko and stuff like that also kind of helped propel this kind of curiosity more than just like, oh, that's a nice little thing out in the periphery that I'm kind of paying attention to. Uh, but that's kind of the, the thing is, I noticed that Zuko has been in a lot of um, high profile kind of media appearances and things, the big, the big views. And uh, outside of that, it's like, well, so if you, you talk to Zuko, get his little rundown, that's kind of like the boilerplate, like what you get from Zcash Media from anything about it. And if he's not talking about this one thing, that's kind of like the limited perspective. And there's just so much more that you could get. In fact, I was trying to get him for the first episode, for the pilot episode of the Zcash podcast, but he actually suggested, um, he actually suggested Nate instead. And I mean, actually that was um, like a, six nine months before i actually decided to do a zcash podcast i just wanted to do an, a one-off interview for the channel and yeah it turned out you know quite well and i mean obviously i'll still try to have him on at some point but there's uh there's a surprising number of faces involved in the zcash world as far as like it's it's really kind of it's it's kind of crazy to think about like crypto ecosystems because um, I guess the largest corollary to the old world might be like a company and then a fan club kind of thing. But it's completely different in that there, the lines are so much more blurred between the people running the project and then everyone else who's in the project Just because, you know, there's a whole lot of kind of overlap there. And so especially I started to take a little bit more interest after the whole, um, the whole, you know, founders reward era sunset and now it's like okay well we got other things going on and so now all of a sudden there's it's the the beauty of incentives right when there's an incentive around all of a sudden you just there's people who always wanted to contribute but now they're just rather than all the million of other things they could be doing in their life now they're just like oh maybe i should actually you know cross that that threshold and start contributing and i mean i always um I interviewed David Campbell a few years ago about Zcash and then I was, you know, looking for another thing. So I was looking to cover more Zcash on my channel, but it, to give a dedicated podcast, first off, I had people harass me about it. saying you, you got to do it. This would be great. You got to do it. And just to, to get them off my back, you know, I kind of moved in that direction, but also like having a, a function to kind of officially do that, you know, helps a lot. So, um, now it's it's kind of crazy to see just how many people there are involved in more than just a casual fan kind of perspective with Zcash. But also, uh, there's something about the, I guess, the character of the average Zcash person. They tend, I've for my like base, like quick judgment kind of thing, uh, we tend to be very, you know, polite, educated, professional, got things going on, and just not super loud just kind of like doing your own thing, just just very content to just have a good life and then, you know, be be a fan of the the good technology, do do good work humbly, but then like 
you know, maybe not really get out there enough about it. And so that's kind of, you know, my perspective is I'm trying to, you know, sort of uh, force Zcashers out of hiding a little bit, which, you know, obviously when you have like a privacy focused project, a lot of people just don't really crave the spotlight, you know? It's not like everyone's sailor putting their little like laser eyes and tweeting all the cyber hornet nonsense day in, day out, right? But so if I could kind of coax a lot of more of the narratives and the things go actually going on into a more, a comfortable, more, you know, lower, maybe lower spotlight, but still a spotlight nonetheless, um, I think it would really, you know, kind of move the, uh, the, the perspective, especially the perception where if people aren't hearing noise all the time in the crypto space, they're like, that project's dead, which <laughs> is one of the dumbest things possible, but it's, it, there's a reason people think that. And so when you start hearing like, oh, like there's this person, there's that person, oh, this is going on here, this is going on here. I hear a lot of people are talking about Zcash and all of a sudden that prompts people who for completely non-scientific reasons, I guess, um, to kind of take a closer look and be like, oh, I remember that back in the day. I mined some and, you know, I haven't used it in a while. And so, yeah, I definitely want to try to bring that perspective. Also, I try to um, kind of want to bring the human connection, uh, like the actual use case kind of connection back to the forefront because I feel like, <laughs> and I used to say in the older days that I kind of viewed Zcash more as like a science project because it was very like a lot of good things went into it. A lot of intelligence, a lot of research, a lot of stuff, but not a lot, a lot of theory, but not a lot of practice. And at some point I started to feel that there was a lot more opportunity for the practice, for the actual, what can people do with this other than, you know, talk on like, you know, think pieces and stuff and, you know, write little things about how zero knowledge proofs are going to change the world, but it'll be some other project that actually gets them into the hands of everyday people. Right. I kind of want to shift the focus on, you know, it, kind of the mind blowing thing. I'm sorry for rambling a little bit, but so like, for example, when I was using a, but the Zek wallet light the other day to, um, I got a little graphic made cause I'm going to make a, some Zcash NFTs. So watch out for that. But I paid the, my guy in Zcash obviously. And I just, having a button that just like shields your entire balance on that wallet is such a, um, I guess a mind blowing thing. If you really think about it from like the basic human experience with money of you got your money and everyone kind of knows about it to a certain extent, right? Or at least the bank does, at least the government does, at least everyone. And the fact that you can just go, it's not, let me break open a command line. Cause I did have a friend who did buy something with shielded Zcash via command line in an in-person shop many, many years ago, but that's no one else. Um, but just the fact that the average person can just go boop and everything's private in no one else's business, but your own, I think that's pretty, that's something that no one is really talking about enough. And I, I hope to talk about it. Yeah, very cool. You mentioned a lot of stuff that, uh, that is, is very close to my heart. This, this idea that, uh, that Zcashers are all about privacy and uh, therefore a lot of us don't necessarily feel like getting in front of a camera and, uh, and start, and it, it often feels like shilling in this, in this cryptocurrency world, when you get on camera and you start talking about a cryptocurrency, um, Zcash for me has never really been about that. And there are a bunch of really interesting use cases, um, that, that, um, we can talk about, uh, the, so if anyone doesn't know my background, I'd, I don't really want to go into it on, on this venue, but, uh, there is a podcast that was just published on Zach hub where I go a bit more into that. And uh, I've always been behind the camera. So this is also my sort of uh, my way to, to, to fix that, to, uh, try to, to try to facilitate something and um, maybe face my, my fears of being so public a little bit. Um, I do believe that... I'm, uh... What's that, Dan? Sorry, Ryan. Yeah, I think I just uh, maybe if we could piggyback on, you know, I think that's great that it's a perfect opportunity for people to learn more about you, your backstory on the Zekka pod. And I just had noticed that Dismad's up here and in me and Ryan have talked a lot about kind of, you know, with, with the AV club looking to amplify and support contributors and content creators, there's going to end up being a ton of crossover with, with Zek hub and the AV club. And maybe it would be cool to have Dismad, talk about Zek Hub a bit and and then maybe Ryan you could piggyback off that with you know how the AV club could potentially 
provide support for Zekub contributors. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if if microphones are working, does matter? Are you able to speak? Testing. Can you hear me? Yes. How you doing? Awesome. Doing good, guys. Hey, I'm doing this for my car, so if I sound funky, it's probably because of that. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, um, Zach Hub has been really fun. Um, I found out about it through the Zcash forums. Ian uh, put out a, I think it was an RFI about possibly forming some kind of Zach Hub. And with my background, I have a background in math and education. And I thought that would be a great opportunity for you to use my experiences and help educate others about Zcash. I love Zcash. Um, I think it's um, a wonderful, everything about it I love. I love the privacy aspect. I love the technical aspect because it involves like crazy math. And I also love the crypto aspect because it's, it's a way of utilizing everything all at once. So Zach Hub kind of gave me an opportunity to um, showcase that A and then B, and more importantly, help out the uh, others who may be learning about this technology for the first time. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, and uh, the cool thing about Zach Cub is it's not just a single person doing it. Anyone can contribute. And we got Squirrel on here and Red Nose. They've been doing um, amazing work as well. And uh, the, the idea is that uh, open source uh, contributions can be made by anyone in the world and it, it improves the uh, the education for everyone worldwide. So I just love that idea and I'm very happy to be um, working on Zek Hub and I hope that we can further collaborate and uh, make it as, as good as possible for the world. Absolutely. I, I look forward to collaborating with everyone that's working on Zek Hub and it's actually pretty amazing what Zek Hub has done in the in the uh, sort of run up to the recent grant application. It's a perfect example of the sort of thing that I would like to see more uh, people who are participating in the AV club have the opportunity to do because uh, here we're giving we're giving each other a platform and access to to resources and to people who have experience doing uh, this kind of content creation and marketing it and uh, distributing it and publishing it. And now with the grants program being what it is, uh, there's an opportunity to to ask for funds in order to perpetuate something. And so um, Zach Hub, I was hoping that Ian would be on here to talk more about how that started because it was really a grassroots project that Ian started. Dizma, do you know enough about that to talk a bit about the, the first like six months and uh, the grant application and everything? Um, well, as far as how I found out about it was through those Zcash forums. I'm not exactly sure on, you know, how Ian came up with the idea, but, um, you know, the first six months, it was mainly, uh, you know, open source con contribution. So not, we were, we were doing a lot of work and we weren't getting paid for it. Um, and it was, it, that's what part of why it was so exciting for me is because it was, um, it was like, we didn't know what we were doing and we just kind of decided to try things and see how it worked. And uh, Ian does a, a fantastic podcast, and I, I think that's kind of the heart of of Zach Cub in in the sense that um, he really ties everything together with that podcast. And I think he's doing a phenomenal job there. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, part of what I've been doing is contributing, help, helping manage the GitHub, and uh, talking about different aspects of the technologies that I think are important to learn. Because, uh, you know, I, I work in a retail setting where I, um, I'm facing customers every day. And it, you'd be surprised, like, just the little things that you would assume people would understand, but they don't. Like, for example, a QR code, I would say, like, 90% of the world doesn't know, even know how to, how to use a QR code. And yet we have this technology that goes way beyond. Um, so we got a lot of work there. And uh, that's, that's exactly why I'm... I want to be part of this project is because um, it's um, it's super uh, important. I think that we, uh, get, you know, foundational level education um, needs to be broadcast to the world in in a easy to consume format. Um, but in terms of uh, how I got started, 
I'm not exactly sure, but um, I'll have to defer that to Ian if he uh, can follow up on that. Yeah, for sure. Um, but you did bring up a really cool point that this takes making this content takes a lot of different people to be involved. It's not ever just a one person job. Uh, we could have someone who has all of the information, but has uh, all the information about ZK Snarks, all the information about um, about cryptocurrency wallets or exchanges, but doesn't have the ability to uh, to make videos about any of it with with video editing, with with proper lighting and camera and um, uh, bringing all those people together is really um, one of the things that I hope that, that we can promote and and connecting them with uh, with the tech that they need in order to do it. Paul, did you get your microphone working? You have the best camera out of any you of us, so I'd <laughs> like if you could introduce yourself. You tell me, am I working now? Yeah, sure you are. So. Yeah. Okay. I had push to talk on. I don't typically use Discord for video conferencing, so this is pretty cool. Um, I'm just really inspired by all that I'm hearing and all the experience that you all are bringing to the table. It is just fantastic. I just uh, you know, wanted to say that um, AV and video production has been a hobby of mine for many, many years, even though it's never been my official job. Um, well, it kind of was in that one way. Uh, I, I did have a time where I worked for MPAA, but it was on the policy and regulatory side of things, not on production. Um, in another job I had, though, it was with the Internet Society, where we did global events all over the world, promoting good Internet policy. And um, they, this was kind of before there was a lot of live streaming done. It wasn't common so much at the time. So I led the initiative to live stream all those events and uh, ended up doing a lot of it myself because we didn't have a lot of the budget to do it. So I was like carrying some gear all around the world sometimes to uh, live stream events or helping others to live stream events wherever they happen to be. Uh, so that that was a period where I, I just got quite a bit of personal experience in doing that and then um, just love to do it still. So I haven't done it so much in this role, but just yesterday, Gary, my colleague who works at ECC on Global Regulatory and I, did a podcast. We recorded a podcast, and so that's uh, I've, I've been like obsessively working on post production on that for the past few hours. So hopefully, I'll get that done and uh, be able to share something with you all pretty soon. But it, it's uh, kind of along the lines of what someone mentioned about like bringing others into this discussion that. Uh, we obviously, Gary and I work on, on policy issues, but uh, we want to help ECC and Zcash be recognized by the larger policy community and to also give a voice to others who uh, you know, can help promote good crypto policy. So that's what that's about. But really happy to, that you guys have kicked this off. It, it just, again, inspires me and I hope to be able to contribute any way I can. That is awesome. I, I, I appreciate that pe multiple people are talking about regulations and regulators and um, reaching regulators. I do believe this is an important part of the, the goal. It's not that close to my heart, but I have a, a lot of appreciation for it. And we do need to, I see Josh grinning. <laughs> and, uh, and we do need to make sure that we connect with, with everyone. Um, but the other part that's really exciting to me, Paul, is that Internet Society was actually a huge inspiration for the AV Club. I've been a fan yeah. of the Internet Society wow. and their work for a long time uh, as I was traveling around doing live streams of my own events and, and events that I wanted to, to capture. I started he hearing more about Internet Society and uh, often being at events where they were or covering events that they couldn't be at. So that, this is really cool. awesome. I don't think I've ever actually uh, had, a, had a video call with anyone from the Internet Society. So it's just as much of an honor for me to have you here. Uh, it's, it's very cool. Good to be here. Thank you. So we're coming up to the top of the hour here, and um, I, I, we haven't really had a focused conversation, but we've had an awesome conversation. I, I don't want to uh, to cut it off, but I, I think for a first meeting, it'd be good to kind of keep it concise and um, and set up for for what we have ahead. So. Uh, if you're watching, and, and for everyone here who's on video, um, the schedule is posted on, on freetoz.com slash ZFAV Club. You can find it there. That site is going to be the hub for information about the AV Club. 
I don't feel like I was a web developer for, for many, many years, and I don't feel like making a website for myself now. So I'm going to use this amazing thing that Skylar has built. Uh, and I, I will have Skylar on um, hopefully for the next meetup, which will be covering the Zcash economy. I want to give a good overview of uh, the different funding options that AV creators have, that artists have to participate in Zcash. Um, uh, uh, there are a lot of people in cryptocurrency who don't have the technical abilities or the desire to code, but want to contribute in other ways, like we've all been talking about here. And I would like uh, in the next the next meetup, which is happening on February 23rd, I would like to really cover what these uh, funding options are, how people can can contribute to the Zcash ecosystem, and also support the life that they that they want. Um, uh, similar paths to what Joel has, Joel has taken and what Zach Hub has done. And so we'll be talking about that in February. Um, we'll also be talking about the tipping economy and uh, free to Z and possibly ads. I'm not sure. I try to shy away from the subject, but it does merit some, uh, some attention from time to time. And then in, in March, we'll cover content translation. And uh, just before the Zcash Brazil event, I do want to uh, to highlight the international communities, the international Zcash communities, pull a bit of the spotlight away from the U.S. or, or spread it out because there is a very strong focus on the U on, on Zcash in the U.S. specifically uh, and in the English language. So it's important to me that we cover translation and how, uh, how we can do that efficiently and effectively early on in the meetup so that these uh, and other videos that we all make can be released in multiple languages and translated promptly. After Zcash Brazil, we will be uh, covering, I want to do a retro with the, with the Zcash Brazil team so that we can talk about uh, specifically about live streaming then. We'll dig into my history with live streaming and how the technology, I, I've kind of grown up with the technology, started in, uh, in 2011 also along with Bitcoin and um, at the time, I was really trying to push Bitcoin and live streaming to everyone, and nobody wanted either one. So the, uh, it took a global pandemic, and now everyone wants both. <laughs> and, and I, I want to kind of lean into that a little bit. So uh, we'll be covering the live stream production and do a retro of, of Zcash Brazil and Zcash, Zcon Bosses there. And then um, we'll go into Web3 infrastructure and uh, some of these publishing things that we have. The I just saw that the LBRY SEC verdict is is coming out later today, so that's something to look for because uh, it ties into the club and to Zcash in, in all sorts of ways. So um, yeah. if I should uh, something already came out, what do you mean? Is there something new to it? Joel might know. Well, my understanding is their final court appearance is going to be uh, Monday, and uh, in Concord, New Hampshire, and I'm going to be. I'm going to be attending in person. Interesting. So as far as I know, sadly, it does seem like everything has gone wrong for them. But maybe there's, I guess we'll find the extent of the actual damage of it then. But mm -hmm. I'll be sure to keep everyone updated on my channel. And there you go. Oh, because they're actually announcing what the damages are going to be. Yeah, basically. I mean, okay. I hear from, uh, I hear from, you know, inside sources or whatever that they're not just going after they're they're kind of haggling over the should the library token itself be considered a security for secondary sales between just peer peer individuals and are they going to go after those people and also they're seeking to go after odyssey.com which is the big mm -hmm. library front end which that's the real bad one so because if something happens to the library the chain has something else has to happen with the chain you could kind of like replug something in but you know anyway we'll see what happens it's not don't want to end this thing on a bummer, but just saying that come Monday, I should know a lot more about this. Yeah, cool. I look forward to it. And uh, you can tell that Devin is also interested. He and I were working on uh, an Alexandria, like he mentioned before, and that served as some inspiration to LBRY. I've met with that team quite a bit over the years. And uh, so I'm, I'm very curious as to how this is all going to play out. And I, I think the rest of the AV club might also be interested in knowing and following along. Also, I, I want to be able to talk uh, in April, I want to be able to talk about some of these different publishing options that we have. Free to Z is doing amazing work with uh, with uploading video content and with live streaming like we're doing here. 
and I expect that to continue. Um, and this is a good example of the collaborations that I'm really looking forward to with the AV Club because I think by working together and really playing with each other's tech, we can, uh, we can really push this stuff forward a lot faster than, than if we're all working in isolation. And, and we get, get some nice uh, on-camera personalities to host podcasts as well as uh, some, some smart people behind the cameras and behind the, the computers, as it were. Um, from there, I have been putting on some, uh, some events on the calendar that are sort of uh, connected to Zcash, but not specific. So I have uh, the NetHack con uh, conference, which was posted in the Zcash forum. They're asking for a grant. And I also have the Internet Archive D Web Camp listed on there. These are events that I would like to see some uh, some people from the AV Club possibly go to and show up and, and help produce some some media and get some media out there. I would ultimately, and this goes back to the the Internet Society connection and inspiration. I would really like to see sort of local chapters of the AV Club showing up, especially along with the ambassadors to help them do their work but also to, to get um, content produced at these events that, that I can't be at or that Dan can't be at and, and anyone else. So, uh, so look forward to those events. And if anyone has ideas for future meetups that we can talk about um, or other events where we should try to, to participate in, then post those in the Discord, comment on the Free to Z page, tell us on Twitter, uh, whatever, whatever it is you feel like. Um, Dan, is there anything else that you wanted, uh, that you wanted to cover? I don't think so. Yeah, this was great. Um, very excited that this first one went smooth. I think it's really cool, uh, that we touched on, you know, integrating with, uh, free to Z and this OBS discord integration, I think has a lot of potential for future events. And yeah, I think you did a great job teeing up at the end here. What some of the things we got planned and it was really nice to see some new faces and old faces. And I'm excited to, to collaborate with everybody. Yep. So uh, I want to wrap this up. But first, I'm going to give you all a homework assignment. Something really simple. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. Big sure. surprise. The AV Club comes from like a sort of a school <laughs> academic reference. So I'm going to sort of run it a little bit that way. We are going to have contests, but I'm not quite ready to announce that yet. And I thought ending the first meetup with like a huge to do thing would be a little, uh, it might be more discouraging than, than, uh, inspiring. Like I'm hoping. <laughs> so all that I'm looking for is for people to search for media from the first six years of Zcash, um, about Zcash, whether it's podcasts or videos on YouTube or on Odyssey or anywhere else. Um, and videos that you think really help to, uh, to educate, to entertain, um, or to just uh, to open some people's eyes to what we're doing. Um, uh, find them, share them, share them in Discord, share them on Twitter, tweet them at us. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can do something with that and create a, a collection of the good stuff. And then we can try to figure out what to do with it to drown out some of this, this price chart madness that's covering the, the galleries. Yeah. Um, so real simple ask there. If you want to push it any further, of course, feel free. Uh, and if anyone has any ideas um, that that we can that we can help to to grow, then then bring it to my attention. Bring it to Dan's attention. Any of us. Like yeah. this is this is going to be a lot of fun. And I I personally don't know exactly what it's going to be because it's a club, and I really want everyone else to participate just as much as me. So thank you all very much for coming, and I look forward to seeing you all online. Have a good day. Thanks, guys.